Hey everybody, Chief here. Thanks for checking out my video. If you haven't yet, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on bells for notifications so you don't miss any of my videos or live streams. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and mash that like button because it really helps me out. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over what I believe to be the top 5 beacon runners in War Robots for this year. So, what do I consider a beacon runner? Basically, for me, a beacon runner is any robot that can travel swiftly across a map in order to either, through force or trickery, take a beacon from the red team. Now, keep in mind that I selected these robots based only on my opinion, and there are many robots in the game that can effectively take a beacon. So aside from my top five, I will be uh, giving you some honorable mentions, uh, other robots that I believe uh, can effectively be used as a beacon runner, uh, at least in Champion League, in the game right now. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite beacon runner is, or maybe you don't even use a beacon runner. Uh, whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. So, let's get started on what I think are the top 5 beacon runners in War Robots. Coming in at number 5, I have the Hellburner. Now, taking a look here at the Hellburner's pilot, and you can feel free to pause the video to take a look at the pilot skills, but I will show the pilots for all the robots I'm going to be showing you today. Now, the Hellburner, he is quite a different robot because of his ability and uh, quick look here at what he looks like he is uh, quite a bit of fun to play I prefer to use him with lockdown as I prefer with any of my beacon runners and uh, with the hellburner specifically I like to run the ECU shield just to give him a little added protection to uh, get in he uh, also is a uh, very capable robot for countering some things in the game like Ares strains now, when he uses his ability, he speeds up and he can uh, run up into a crowd or near uh, some of the red and detonate. Now, his detonation uh, hurts not only him, but does massive damage to the red team. Now, the reason I have him so low on this list is because when you use his ability, he takes that self-damage, but you cannot heal yourself from that damage, so there is only a certain number of times you're going to be able to use his ability before the, the robot just dies. But other than that, he is an outstanding beacon runner. As you can see from this gameplay, he's a very capable beacon runner and he can do a lot of damage to the red team. So if you're looking for something that is dual purpose, that might be able to help counter some of the uh, Ares trains, then that would be the robot for you. And coming in at number four on my list is the Blitz. This is my personal favorite as far as beacon runners go. This is the one I use in my personal account. Here is a quick look at the pilot. The uh, Blitz is another robot that is uh, dual purpose. He can be a great beacon runner as well as a very good brawler. And for me, that brawling is what really put him on this list. And personally, I believe that the Blitz offers the most utility out of all of the robots that are on this list today. His suppression from his ability is invaluable in being able to take beacons that are contested. When starting off by dropping your Blitz first in the game, the thing that you want to do is probably just go ahead and use your ability, get the timer going. Uh, in most maps, you're able to get to the first beacon and have just enough time for your ability to uh, finish before going in and attacking the second beacon. So, as long as you pay attention to your timing, you will have that ability ready. Now, he does get uh, quite fast when he uses his ability, so you can use that uh, offensively just to move across the map quickly, as I'm showing you here in this gameplay, and you can also use it defensively in order to suppress other robots, in order to finish taking a beacon or just to kill them so that you can uh, get the beacon turned. Double kill. Now, with all of the beacon runners, you always have the option of dropping your beacon runner first in the game, or you can hold him and drop him mid-game. 
and you can see here in this footage I actually dropped him mid game and I was able to take our home beacon back and then uh, move quickly across the map and end up taking uh, a couple of the other red beacons. So this was actually uh, quite a fun uh, match that I had on Springfield and uh, the Reds put up quite a fight but uh, this is halfway through the match and uh, I'm going over here into a center beacon here I'm able to get this uh, using the Blitz's speed, I can get across the map relatively quickly, and the firepower that he has can help me to take those beacons or defend the beacons. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue pressing over here, and you see that uh, I uh, run up to uh, get closer. That uh, helps me to kill the Reds quicker because of the, uh, sh the way the uh, shotguns work. You basically you do more damage up close, and uh, the Blitz, even though he is uh, fairly low health because of his suppression, you can see here he is able to do quite a bit of damage and uh, can sustain quite a bit as well. And it's that utility mixed with his massive firepower and quick speed that really makes him my personal favorite of all of the uh, beacon runners. Uh, if you watch any of my live streams, you always notice that uh, the majority of the time I am using the Blitz uh, as my first robot out of the gate, and, uh, and I just have so much fun with him. So if you really like to brawl and you're looking for some utility and don't want to give up too much damage, the Blitz is probably the robot that you want to choose for your beacon runner. And coming in in the middle of the list at number three is the Strider. The Strider is an outstanding beacon runner. Quick look at the pilot skills that I run on the Strider. Now the Strider has five dashes that it can use. Using those dashes can allow you to get across a map in a hurry. It's great for covering long distances, especially on some of the longer maps, to get across quickly. Now the Strider requires probably some of the most skill in order to effectively play it, not only as a beacon runner, but uh, as a robot in general. When starting off by dropping your Strider first in a game, you want to uh, decide which beacon you want to go for. Sometimes it is a close beacon and sometimes it is like the center beacon or the contested beacon. So on this match what I did is I went uh, directly for our left beacon and then I conserved a couple of my dashes so I could get across and get to the uh, red team's home beacon because they were a little bit slow getting there. I was able to use the uh, speed from all of the dashes on the Strider to get there quickly and I was able to get that beacon secured before they could do anything about it. Now the Strider is no slouch as far as firepower goes. The uh, Strider is equipped with one heavy and two light weapons and uh, he can put a hurting on most of the robots in the game. Uh, but like I said, it does require some skilled gameplay, and that is to uh, use your dashes to go back and forth and managing your dashes to avoid any kind of incoming damage. So it's, uh, it's a pretty fun robot to play. He is quick, and uh, there is always something to do when you are managing your dashes, and uh, you do have to, uh, like I said, use quite a bit of skill in order to uh, make it fairly effective. But you can see here that by using the dashes, uh, I'm able to get in all the way across the map, pick up some beacons, and uh, get all the way to the uh, enemy's spawn point and still do quite a bit of damage to them. Now, coming in at the number two spot on the top beacon runners for War Robots, this is the brand new Phantom Robot. I am running the Adrian Pilot on him right now. This robot is a ton of fun, and uh, I'm going to show you why with some of the gameplay. He has a very unique ability with the game. Uh, his ability is called Blink, and it basically allows you to teleport. But when you use the ability, you also 
run very fast. I believe he goes up to 90 kilometers per hour when he is using his ability and uh, on top of that uh, he also does get some damage reduction while his ability is in use. So when uh, I drop the Phantom I like to uh, go ahead and drop my beacon and start my ability and run to the uh, nearest beacon and get that used. Now another thing to uh, take note of here is that I am using phase shift with the Falcon. That is a very valuable skill or uh, module to use. It uh, really complements the gameplay of the uh, Phantom and uh, you can see here that between the use of his ability, his speed, uh, and his firepower uh, he can do quite a bit and he's very effective at at getting the uh, beacons. Now as far as a beacon runner is concerned the uh, Phantom is very 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 near the top uh, at least in my book as far as the effectiveness but uh, he is uh, you know he's new and uh, you know we haven't quite learned all the ways to counter him just yet so that could be uh, you know why he is so effective at it still but uh, you know right now I do have him down at the uh, number two spot and that was kind of difficult for me to uh, keep him down there at the number two spot um, but uh, you'll see uh, when I uh, show you who I think is the uh, king of beacon runners now the uh, Phantom has a lot of tools at his disposal. It's not just uh, his speed. It's not his, you know, just his uh, his ability. Uh, but uh, he is quite a trickster. So he uses a lot of his uh, tricky moves, his teleporting, his phase shift, uh, and uh, he can really do a number against Reds. So if you're looking for kind of a jack of all trades, a bot that can do it all, whether you drop him first in the match or midway through, I think the Phantom is probably the robot that you're looking for. And now, number one for beacon runners in war robots, it is still the Loki. This thing is so much fun to play. He is so fast and he causes so much confusion. Now, he certainly doesn't uh, have as much utility as, say, a Blitz, and he doesn't offer as much firepower uh, as, say, the brand new Phantom, but as far as being a pure beacon runner, it is hard to beat, especially if you are running him in a squad. Now, I know the Loki has been out for quite a while, and a lot of people uh, have probably picked him up and they might be a little hesitant to put him in their hangar and uh, I don't blame you. He uh, can cause you to start losing some damage overall so if you're going for damage this may not be the best beacon runner for you but if you run a lot of squads or you uh, have a pretty solid hangar otherwise this Loki is definitely going to be picking up those beacons. Now the Loki is extremely effective at running beacons whether you drop him as your first spot or you drop him mid game. Uh, there's a lot of tactics involved as far as when you should drop the Loki um, but uh, quite often when there's a Loki on the field the longer he's on the field the uh, less chance the Reds have of winning the game. So, uh, But uh, there is a little bit of a trade-off like I mentioned uh, a second ago with uh, losing some damage output because most of the time you are not going to be using your weapons when you are in the Loki. Uh, so, you know, he is strictly a beacon runner. Uh, he can get a lot of beacons. He can be pretty sneaky too. He can also do quite a bit of damage with the three light weapons. But uh, overall, you will expect to lose some damage uh, if you are running the Loki. But uh, wow, he is just so much fun. And. Uh, you know, most of the time, even if he is not getting the beacons uh, straight up, he uh, quite often will attract attention from several of the uh, red players and they will stay focused on him until they can get him off the field, which hopefully if your team is paying attention, they will be uh, taking advantage of that and pushing for the uh, beacons themselves.
Now, when I was talking about the Strider, I mentioned how the Strider was a very effective beacon runner as far as being able to use his dashes to cover a large area in a short period of time. So the Loki can also do that as long as he stays uh, in his stealth he will keep that solid 90 kilometers per hour speed which is very very fast um, it's uh, actually so fast in some some maps that uh, you end up uh, overshooting your uh, the area that you're trying to get to just because uh, any kind of bump on the ground can uh, act as a ramp and send you up into the air uh, it's pretty fun but uh, you can see here that uh, even though uh, he does only have the three light weapons, he can effectively use them, uh, but you do want to be very careful if you do decide to uh, drop out of your stealth. Uh, it is uh, a tactic that some players can use uh, in order to sneak up, like here I'm sneaking up on an Ares, he doesn't see me coming behind him, and I can go ahead and get him taken out pretty quickly with my uh, with my weapons now the Loki doesn't have all the bells and whistles of like the Phantom but uh, with his stealth and his solid speed you can see here he's able to get all over this map with ease um, and uh, if you are worried about somebody using quantum radar you can always uh, keep some power cells handy and use phase shift. Phase shift is a very effective counter uh, to anybody that might be running quantum radar like uh, this guy right here. So I was able to phase shift, I tried taking him out but uh, I do end up going down. But uh, you know I'm going to uh, give you a full match um, and this right here, this match right here is exactly why Loki is still the king of Beacon Runners. Okay, so here we are. This is Beacon Rush and we are dropping in on Dreadnought. Uh, I am starting out with my Loki. I was going to go left there, but I decided to go ahead and head into center. Um, I had a couple of teammates already going for the left beacon, so I should be able to get center here without much trouble. And uh, let me just uh, get this turn and I will go up and uh, let me see if I can go up and get B. Looks like my team is headed that way as well. And since I am on the field in the Loki, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, press straight towards their home beacon. So uh, looks like uh, they had one guy uh, trying to uh, press on this side and he ended up going down. Uh, White Dragon, hopefully he does not have Quantum Radar. But uh, if he does, at least I have my phase shift standing by. And okay, he is coming down. I'm gonna go ahead. Oop, I probably should not have uh, hit that phase shift. That was a mistake on my part, but uh, that's okay. Looks like he's gonna go down. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting this beacon. And let me go ahead and cause some more havoc. Let me uh, get a quick reload there. And I'm going to, I think, head over towards the D beacon. And uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and just keep flipping beacons on them until they can uh, take me out. We'll see uh, how frustrated they get. So here we are, coming up on the D beacon. Got a, uh, an Ares here. Should be able to get him taken down. There we go. Alright, back into uh, stealth here. And let me go ahead and push into center. Let's see, it looks like I have a couple of reds here challenging for center. I have a teammate here already, and uh, let's see if we can't uh, help him out a little bit. All right, so we've got uh, this one secure. It looks like they are going to be fine, so let me go ahead and uh, press on towards their last remaining beacon. And uh, it looks like they are turning D back, but, uh, you know, with the Loki, I am not trying to defend the beacons. I'm just trying to get them blue. Um, okay, these guys had uh, quantum radar, so I was able to use my phase shift. I'm still getting some damage here, so let me, uh, let me see what I can do to take care of this guy. His uh, last stand just triggered. Let's get him taken out. There we go. All right. And let's see what we have over here. Okay, so uh, there's two defending their home beacon so let me go ahead and uh, push back into the center and uh, head back towards that D beacon 
I know that uh, Raijin over there has quantum radar and it should be coming back up. So an Ares coming here into center. Hopefully my teammate can uh, keep an eye on him. I'm going to go ahead and uh, press towards the D-Beacon. Ooh, somebody had quantum radar there. So, uh, let's see, it looks... Wow, okay, they're actually just letting me take it. I don't know if this guy disconnected or what. But, uh, you know, thank you very much. I will take the beacon. And, uh, this one here was the one with the quantum radar, I'm guessing. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, phase shift and try to run away. The uh, Loki is great at running, but I am getting pretty torn up at this point. So uh, up here at the uh, top, I'm going to go ahead and drop down and try to get onto their home beacon. Looks like they are pressing for D once again, but that's okay. Uh, I've been uh, keeping the beacons turned pretty well so far this match. Looks like uh, an Ares here. Hopefully he does not have quantum radar. I'm going to go ahead and leave that beacon and uh, move over here towards B. Maybe I'll get lucky and uh, be able to get this one. It looks like the uh, Raijin is uh, focused elsewhere, so let me try and get some damage on him. Okay, got him locked down. Hopefully he's off the beacon. Okay, he is off the beacon. He already used his QR, so I should be able to get this beacon. There we go. Right out from under him. That's pretty funny. And uh, I'm going to just keep on running some beacons. Looks like uh, the red team is down two players. And uh, I am slowed down quite a bit. I got some busted up legs, but uh, I am still moving pretty quick. So here we are. I am going to take their home beacon once again. Go ahead and get some damage on this Ares from uh, 500 meters out. I do need to be careful though, he does have some splash damage with those Talumbas. And uh, I don't want to get taken out by the splash damage. And uh, here we go. Go ahead and... Uh, hmm. Go ahead and uh, run back towards uh, D, I guess. And uh, here we go. It is not quite as fast as I was at the beginning of the match, but uh, he is still pretty quick. So here we are. Let's see, what do we have over here? Ooh, they are walking away, and I don't think they see me, so that is going to be great for me. So let me see if I can't get D turned while they're not looking. And there we go. It's white, and there... Okay, looks like I'm going to get it. And uh, let me go ahead and move up and see if I can't uh, try and give a little bit of support there in center. Looks like they are taking out my, uh, my team. We are down to two players, so that is not good for me, but uh, we have a very big beacon advantage. I'm going to use my phase shift real quick and just try to get to safety. Now, I do have quite a few robots left in the uh, hangar just in case I do go down, but... Uh, Let's see if we can't get this. There we are. So that was a great match, and that right there is exactly why the Loki is still the king. Undisputed. So uh, didn't get much damage, only 615k damage, but uh, eight beacons. That is crazy. Uh, we were running out of uh, people, but uh, we won that one strictly by beacons. So that was a uh, great job with the Loki. So a quick recap of my top five beacon runners. Coming in at number five, the Hellburner. Number four, the Blitz. Number three, the Strider. Number two, the Phantom. And the King still is the Loki. Now a couple of honorable mentions I want to go over with you uh, just real quick that are still fairly effective in uh, Champion League as beacon runners is the Pursuer, the Raven, the Aljun, Invader, and Kumio. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And until the next video, Chief out.